The Cuphead Delicious Last Course DLC is definitely known for its fast-paced bullet-dodging action, but what happens when you refuse to fire a single shot in the base game's six run-and-gun levels, let alone doing it with the new character Ms. Chalice? Let's find out. Hey everyone, it's Abdali here with another awesome Cuphead Tips and Tricks tutorial video. Today's video is showcasing what happens if we do all of the six run-and-gun stages with Ms. Chalice, and we do each of them flawlessly. Not only earning ourselves a P rank, but taking it a step further and earning a P++ rank. There's really an awesome reward that you'll definitely want to stick around for. Thanks again to each and every one of you who have been enjoying all of the Cuphead tutorial videos, such as this recent one where we taught you exactly how to get a secret costume for Ms. Chalice. Check out the video and more in the description. Now before we get started, there's a little bit of context to go over, so let's learn what will be the most helpful for you to earn all of these P ranks in each of the six run and gun stages. First off, the six run and gun stages can be completed with any of the three characters, but for this tutorial, we'll be focusing on the new character Ms. Chalice. Secondly, the only way to earn the P rank is to beat the entire level without shooting down any enemies. Now, you'll have to make your way through the entire level by jumping, dodging, and avoiding all the enemies that you can. You are, however, allowed to parry off of any enemy that's able to, so keep that in mind. Also, don't worry too much about successfully having 3 out of 3 HP or doing the 3 mandatory parries for a good score. Just beating the level will be good enough to get that P rank. Lastly, if you want to take the P rank to the max, try challenging yourself to earn a P++ rank, where you hit every benchmark in yellow font. That means a super fast time, HP taking zero damage, and parrying three enemies. Doing that with Ms. Chalice will be a challenge, but this video will show you some tips and tricks on how to get that done. Since this video is showcasing Ms. Chalice, let's talk about her unique traits that will help you beat these with the P++ rank, as well as give you more mobility options for beating other bosses too. We're starting off with the double jump. Miss Chalice has access to a mid-air double jump that can get you out of a lot of tough spots. Her normal jump height isn't as high as Cuphead's, so you'll have to get used to that adjusted height by double tapping jump in most places to reach those levels. Secondly, the dodge roll. Holding down and pressing the dash button will allow an invincible dodge roll that is necessary to master. Take it a step further and learn to roll off of edges and then jump in mid-air to make your way farther than normal normally jumping. And last but not least is the dash parry. Pressing dash in the air will allow Ms. Chalice to dash forward and parry anything that's able to. As soon as she's done with the dash parry, she'll bounce up and you'll be able to dash parry again. Every time you successfully dash parry, you'll earn your double jump back. So keep that in mind when going against all of these obstacles. Now that you have a bit of context and some tips and tricks on how to master Ms. Chalice, let's jump into each of the six run and gun levels. All right, our first level is going to be Forest Follies. As you can see, it is a nice and easy level, said no one ever. No, this one's actually pretty hard because the mini boss towards the end is going to need a creative way of getting right past it. Anyway, as you're playing through this level, you really want to pay attention to the little pink smogs that the mushrooms fire or any of these vertical up and down spike balls. Keep in mind you're going to need three of them if you want to get the perfect P++ rating. Now right over here is going to be a little bit harder because the blue guy and the little flower guy do a little bit of work. So keep on dodging them accordingly. Right here is where you want to bait out the mushroom to fire another pink one at you so that you can take the high route directly over the acorn maker. Now right over here you have some plants with some really nice teeth. So be very careful about that. Make your way all the way through using some of the dashes and of course taunt them at the end before crossing the Our next level is going to be none other than Treetop Trouble on Inqua Island number one. This one's one of my favorite ones because there's a lot of vertical platforming and I really like the concept of all of these bouncing ladybugs and of course Woody Woodpecker knockoff over here. Anyway, we want to be able to parry three things in the level so keep your eyes peeled for any of the pink ladybugs that are bouncing around. So you may have to backtrack a little bit in order to safely get all three of them in this very first part of the level. 
Now, if you're paying attention to the dodge roll and the gap, you can easily do that and jump, uh, just like Donkey Kong Country. So think of it that way if you ever played that game. This part is going to get a little bit harder because sometimes the little wooden guys will be able to fire out a parryable spike ball. But you really just want to focus on just dodging it entirely. Now, you'll notice that uh, we did mention earlier that uh, the jump height is a little bit different with Ms. Chalice compared to Cuphead and Mugman. So you're going to be have to you're going to be having to use your double jumps a lot more liberally, especially in this first part right over here. So jump over this little tower and then now it's just going to be a forward run because this area is pretty interesting considering the fact that as soon as you step on any of these leaves over here, a fireball will erupt from the very bottom and cause that little leaf to disintegrate. Now right over here all you really have to do is jump dash jump Jump, dash, make your way right over that mosquito looking thing and head on out. All right, next up is going to be Funfair Fever. All right, get your tickets to the circus. It's opening soon. Right over here is going to be a random spot where the balloons will be flying at you. And it is RNG based off of which balloons are coming at you. So really pay attention to the pink one, as the pink one is the only one that's parryable. And you could do it three times for one balloon in order to get all three of your parries knocked out for the perfect run. Uh, right over this way, you'll see this little bell. You can make your way on top of it. But now is the really hard part where we want to abuse the invincibility frames on our dodge roll. As you can see, we dodge roll right past those guys. We're going to do the exact same thing, but dodging right over that way. And over here, right on the very tip, if you're standing, you'll be able to dodge roll all the way through there as well. Anyway, watch out for the wizard over this way. Do a jump, dash, jump, dash for the longest and highest possible jump with... Miss Chalice, and head on over this way. Your best bet is going to be rolling through them with the down and dash. Watch out for all of the mustard and ketchup. Uh, and of course, relish is also coming your way too. So once you're here at the last S, wait till it's at its peak. Jump, dash, jump, dash, and you are all set. See you later, hot dog. Keeping up with the circus theme, we have the next run and gun, which is called Funhouse Frazzle. Now, this one gave me the most trouble to get a perfect run with. Now, your first parry is going to need to be the first duck. Head right over here and stand behind this bush in order to spawn the next duck UFO. And simply put, you've got to be able to get through this wall's mouth without getting hit by any of those lips that are constantly moving forward. So, utilize the forward dash in order to make that really fast. Now, I like going right side up over here simply because it's a little bit easier to maneuver. Invincibility dash as best as you can. You can dash right through that guy and just watch out for the cannonballs and those little rockets that are coming at you. Right over here is a little bit harder. I just like to simply just jump across the very top of the screen over here, do an invincibility roll all the way across the gap. Uh, just be very careful with those jacks that are coming over here. If you're able to swap sides, do that. And keep in mind that you are going to need to hit another jack in order to get your third parry. So go right side up over here. Use an invincibility jack dash right past the tuba. And then you're at the final boss area. This one's going to be a little interesting because you have to watch out for the tongue. So if it says, uh-oh, go to the other side over here. Wait your turn. Land right over there. And then slip right in the mouth to call it a day. See ya never. Next up is going to be the Perilous Piers. This one is going to be a little tougher because there's a lot of water that you could potentially fall into. So if you're already good at using the Invincibility Dodge, do that through every single one of these little urchin things that is uh, throwing the spike balls upwards. While you're making your way forward over here, you want to be able to keep in mind that you want to see every single one of the pink flying fish because those are going to be one of your three parries throughout, just like that one right there. 
Now, the backstroking lobster guy, yeah, he's going to be a little bit of a pain. So do your best to take the high road over this way. Uh, if you see that starfish, you can parry on that. Right over here is really a patience game. Watch out for the electricity. Uh, dodge right through that, and then you're going to be on the ship for the next phase. Now, if you don't already have three parries at this point over here, you're going to need to keep an eye out for any of the pink shrimp that are coming your way. Now, this interesting looking octopus creature over here is going to be able to fire a whole bunch of different, uh, I guess, balls at these rocks over here, or cannonballs. Yeah, so anyway, as soon as you parry on top of his gem, he'll be able to do that. So you got to keep up with it. Now, while you're keeping up with shooting out cannonballs, you also have to dodge the, uh, the different bubbles that are coming out, all the different shrimp that are flying at you. And if you still need parries, you'll notice that I backtracked a little bit for a shrimp to ensure that my run is going to be 100% successful. Uh, right over here is the very end, so watch out. Jump over here at the end, do a little taunt, and call it a day. And last but not least, we have Rugged Ridge. This is the last of the six run and gun levels, which is definitely harder. But if you've already mastered the roll off of the ledge into a jump, into an air dash, then you're probably going to have a great time with this one. So if you haven't mastered those, keep on trying because taking the low road in this section right over here is going to be your best bet. Now this part's going to be relatively easy. Just watch out for the little mud men. And you'll notice over here that every other fireball coming out of these little dragons is going to be parryable. So you can get three to four different parries over here, but of course you only need three of them. Just be very careful. Do your invincibility roll whenever you can or whenever you need to in order to get your way through. So just try not to get hit by any of those fireballs or the dragon when you're jumping. Right over this way is gonna be relatively quick. If you parry on top of that face of the wall, you'll be able to then jump over it super easily. Watch out for another one of these screaming lions, and those demons are actually a hitbox, so be very careful as they're going along through. Now, next up over here is going to be this giant. It's going to be some sort of cyclops that he's going to be looking at you, so just be careful about him. This entire section is just going to be a platforming section, so by now, you're already good with doing double jumps and air dashes, so feel free to go ahead and continue doing that. There's going to be some pretty big leaps of faith, so just be mindful of where you're going. And the only threat is going to be these circular fire guys. So try to give yourself a little bit of room so that you can react around them and then essentially just jump over them or jump through them so that they don't do any damage. But a little bit more patience, a little more perseverance, you'll be able to make it to the very end just like that, finish the Cyclops, and we are done with every single one of the run and gun stages with the perfect flawless run showcasing every single time in yellow, every single HP bonus in yellow, all the parries in yellow, skill grade two star. That is what I consider a P++. Congratulations, you did it. As soon as you're done with all of those levels and earn the P rank on them, head back to Inkwell Isle 2 and speak with the turtle in the northeastern part of the island. He'll say, ah, you found the path of pacifism. I am quite impressed. You shall now be able to see the world in a new light. Go in peace. Bravo, you just earned a few bonuses. Look at your options menu for new visual and audio modes. Now, of course, once you're done with that, take a look at options, click on audio, and then scroll down over to vintage mode and turn that on. And while you're in the options, head on over to visual, take a look at filters, and then scroll through and choose the black and white filter. As soon as you do this, you'll notice that the music and the visuals have a retro vintage feel to them. Take this new filter into any one of the levels and have a go. You'll notice that it's quite the different experience, especially if you're looking at parrying projectiles. It's nearly impossible to distinguish a pink parry projectile versus a purple one with this filter, so good luck. And there you have it. 
All of the run and gun levels performed with Ms. Chalice, not taking a single hit and earning all of the end screen benchmarks, or in other words, the P++ rating in order to get this cool vintage black and white filter and audio filter. What did you think? Is this challenge something that you'll want to try on your own, or is earning the bare basic P rank enough? Let's continue the discussion going in the comments below, and as always, thanks so much for enjoying the video. If this video helped you out, be sure to like and share it with a Cuphead fan just like yourself. And don't forget to subscribe for even more Cuphead content and everything Nintendo as well. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.